If somebody were to come in here completely unaware of our customs, they would surely wonder what atrocity this man was accused of. Because while everyone else is enjoying their day off on President's Day, we're all stuck here listening to this idiotic trial. This same guy would think that this case must involve some sort of heinous treachery, and he would not disapprove of the law that would lock these people up. But then he would hear that no crime, no motive, no violence occurred, but that this really cool Kylius guy is being wrongfully accused by Atratinus, the son of Bestia, whom Kylius is prosecuting through the resources of a prostitute. The man that came in here would appreciate that all you hardworking judges came in on a day of leisure for such a frivolous case. If you really pay attention, you will see that no one would have the audacity to make this accusation unless they really hated someone. Atratinus, I don't blame you, and I won't question your morals, because I know you were ordered to do this. However, if you actually thought that you would win, then I would attribute that to your immaturity. But everyone else here is just morally depraved. I will first respond to the prosecution's questioning of Caelius's honor. Caelius's father could respond himself, but he's not involved in the forum anymore. However, everyone should know this. Caelius's father has always had the highest amount of honor and is well regarded by not only his family, but everyone who has met him. The prosecution's pretty bonkers. They got some nerve trying to say that being the son of an equus is some sort of crime. Who's he hurting? Nobody. But guess who the prosecution's hurting? Got some hurt feelings over here. You're gonna hear about how his mother is brought to a state of depression, and how his dad's pretty upset too, I guess. All this grief, all this sadness, clear as day. Mr. Kylius here has been offered greater honors by his townsmen in the city of Putioli while he was absent than anyone has while they were present. He was elected to the highest position without even trying over many people who actually were. Now they have sent the best testimony for Caelius, which I have drawn from in my defense. Caelius would have never gotten this if he displeased both his father and such a wonderful town. So clearly, he is a good person. Now back to me. Don't, don't forget that I am also an equus. The accusations regarding Caelius's sexual morality are no more than slander, for my client does not apologize for his sex appeal. Such insults are thrown at all hot young studs. But it is one thing to slander, and another thing to make a charge. And this charge cannot be proven by argument alone. If it is delivered rudely, then it is abuse. If it's thrown about in a more refined way, then it is called sophistication. But it really just makes you a pretentious blowhard. Now then, at this slanderous part of the accusation, I was so sad that it was forced upon my dear friend, Atratinus. How could they do this to a nice, innocent little kiddo, instead of giving the part to one of their more robust speakers who could actually handle it? I feel so bad for you, Atratinus. So I'm gonna go easy on you, buddy. You better watch yourself at your tiniest little buddy old pal. <laughs> You're so dead set on making accusations like this. You didn't even cite your sources. So why should we believe you in the first place when you insult Caelius' morals? But that's not your fault, kiddo. All these <laughs> battle men <laughs> are to blame for that. I admire your modesty because it's clear you don't want to be here either. So argument's literally so crap. I could rebut it with like two words. Caelius isn't suspicious. He's a perfect little sunflower or he's right by his father. I'm going to say more stuff about him now. Not about me, but Caelius. His dad and I used to hang out a lot. No one saw Caelius in the flower of youth except with me, his dad, or Crassus, the person who educated him. Who even cares that Caelius was allegedly friends with Catiline for a little bit? He was vulnerable at that time in his life. He was by my side during the praetorship for a while Till a year passed, and then Catiline was charged of extorting someone. Caelius was with me the whole time. Didn't even come to him for legal reasons. The same year I was on the prowl for that hot new consul ship, Caelius never even left me, even while Catiline was seeking it out as well. 
He's been loyal, except for that one time he wasn't. Get this, after several years without doing anything wrong, he supported Catiline the second time he ran for the consulship. Do you think I should have been controlling his every move? Back in the day, we were raised with military strictness, but nowadays, young people always have trouble staying on the right path. Let's be honest, a ton of people did the same thing anyways. Catiline was so suave and attractive and hardworking that no one really expected him to have surrounded himself with thugs and prostitutes. He was a monster, but who can blame Caelius for being friends with this Casanova? Who is cooler with famous people while being more connected to shameful people? What guy of the better parts of society who is also a more disgusting enemy to those same people? Who is more of a whore while being more patient in their work? Who is greedier while being more unrestrained in their generosity? He has good sides and bad sides, so you can understand why Caelius would have seen the good in him. Even then, Caelius shouldn't be singled out for his chumminess with Catiline, because after all, it happened to a lot of good men besides him. He, he even had me tricked at one point. He seemed like a well-intentioned guy at first, but I realized sooner than anyone that this Catiline dude is a talentless hack. So after you tried to slander his morality, you guys claimed he participated in the conspiracy because he was friends with Catiline. Not only is that the stupidest, dumbest, most senseless charge I've ever heard in my life, but the young man who made that charge barely made any sense. Apart from just how little evidence there is about it, why in the world would Caelius give up his youth just to be associated with a conspiracy? And now look how far we've fallen. Bribes? Really? Caelius isn't some stupid idiot. Okay, he is a stupid idiot but not one who would go around accusing other people of bribery if he himself was guilty of the same crime. Just take my word for it. It may seem better to aggressively prove the innocence of someone instead of just considering the facts. That's just a matter of being too eager. Now, about the debts you guys claim Caelius has, I'll, this is all I'm going to say about that. Look, it's his dad who has all the money, so Caelius doesn't keep track of it. No one has ever said anything about his expenditures. They complained about how high his rent is, and at first I had no idea why they were harping on this, but now I get it. Clodius is trying to sell the apartment complex, and he thinks that if they all exaggerate how much the rents are, he'll get more money for the place. Nice try. You guys criticize the fact that he moved out of his dad's house. Um, this is the most normal thing ever at his age. After that case he won, which turned out to be great for him, but not really for me, he needed to be closer to the downtown, and his dad's house was out in the sticks. So he rented a place on the Palatine. As Crassus quoted when he was talking about Ptolemy's arrival, um, um, this, this is, is the, the most, most normal, normal thing, thing ever at, at his, his age. age. Basically, this move and this Lady Macbeth of Rome started the rumors about everything. But I'm not scared of these false accusations. They say that they have some senator witness who testified to getting roughed, roughed up by our friend Caelius here. If he ever ends up coming, I'd ask him why he's waited so long to accuse him. If he ends up sliming his way out of that question, I'd ask him which fountain he flowed out of. If he flowed out of his own fountain, then I'd be cool with him. But more likely, he is a tiny little river drawn from the head of this entire operation. Claudia. <coughs> but I'd be overjoyed by this, because with all your influence, you only got one senator bribed. I'm not scared of these witnesses at all. People accuse others of crime all the time, but they never bring it to court because they know they'll lose. Don't believe these accusers. Claudia is behind all of this, and she's just using these guys to seem a bit more legitimate. But let's not blame these witnesses too much, because they were just trying to do their job. It's completely up to you, judges, to believe what these guys are saying. 
After all, which one of us wouldn't say something mean about the other, especially if we were paid to? Basically, just don't pay attention to these witnesses, guys. These witnesses who have been bribed and manipulated and even worse.